Hello, welcome to this video on the distinction between the concepts of weight and mass. In order to motivate what the real difference is, we're going to focus in on actually how we measure these things. Now, in thinking about weight, we know from everyday experience how to measure it. We just take the object whose weight we want to know and we place it on a spring scale. The scale interprets the force that the mass exerts on the scale, which we'll denote F sub M S, and it turns that force into a reading of the weight. Now, we'd like to know a little bit more about what it is that that force really represents. To answer that, we're going to think about the actual forces on the mass. One of these forces is, of course, our standard go-to force for most physical problems. It's the force of gravity. It's a long-range force, so it acts from the center of the mass, and it's exerted by the Earth on the mass, so we label it as FEM. Another force that must certainly be present is the one that's going to counter this um, force. It's the upward force by the scales acting on the mass. Now, if we think about this, when we first put the mass on the scale, it's actually going to bob up and down a little bit, so there's quite a lot of acceleration. But once we are getting a stable reading from the scale, everything is nice and stationary, and there's no acceleration. Newton's second law tells us that this means that the sum of the forces is actually zero. So written as vectors, we can write down that sum quite easily, if we want to think about magnitudes, we need to start and pick and choose some sort of coordinate system. And we'll just take a nice convenient one. We'll say anything pointing up is positive and anything pointing down is negative. Using that convention, Newton's second law just becomes this statement here that FSM minus FEM is equal to zero. Now, of course, we can easily rearrange and get FSM is equal to FEM. But further, we know that FEM, that is to say the gravitational force by the Earth on the mass, is just the mass, M, times the gravitational acceleration, G. So that's now given us the magnitude of FSM. And in fact, using our convention, since it's positive, we know that FSM is indeed upwards in agreement with our drawing. Now, we know also Newton's third law. It says that the force by the scale on the mass is equal and opposite to the force by the mass on the scale. We can write that down and immediately conclude then that the force by the mass on the scale is negative mg. Okay, and the negative sign is just reminding us it's pointing down. So the magnitude of this force, which is really what the scale is measuring, is just mg. Now, it's a force, which means technically the units of weight should be newtons. But the scale actually is calibrated in a certain way. We'll talk about how in a little bit. And therefore, converts this somehow into some information that's supposedly talking about mass and therefore has the units of kilograms. But let's see what the correct way to measure a mass would actually be. And then the way to do that is to use something like this, which is a pan balance. The pan balance is two different pans attached to a bar that pivot on this little triangular support in the diagram. And the way it works is you place your unknown mass, the capital M, onto one pan, and you stack a bunch of known masses onto the other pan and try to get them to balance. So let's explore the forces here and see what this is measuring and how. So let's assume that the unknown mass again is capital M, but the total of the masses on the left will just denote by little m. Okay, in this case, the forces that we need to draw in are exactly like they were for the spring scale, except we'll draw one in, one set of these three different forces in for each pan. So there those are. 
Now the next thing that we need to do is go through the same exact kind of thinking. We can apply Newton's second law because there's no acceleration if everything is nice and balanced. And so we can quickly actually determine these forces that we're interested in. The force by the collected known mass is little m on the scale and the force by the unknown mass capital M on the scale. And those are just related to the masses times the gravitational acceleration again. Now, we haven't um, yet learned about rotational motion. We'll eventually teach you and explain where this comes from. But for now, accept that in order for this thing to not rotate, for the pan to not tip, those two forces that are being exerted on the pans must be equal. Given that, we now have this statement that the two forces are equal. And so we can cancel off the negative signs, cancel off the gravitational acceleration from either side, and immediately conclude that our unknown mass m must be equal to the total mass that we placed on the other side of the scale, that little m. So now we know exactly what the mass, the unknown mass m is. On the other hand, the weight that we're measuring is actually a combination of this mass and the gravitational acceleration. So fundamentally, this immediately means that we have a few little tricks we can play with weight. For instance, we can jump from the Earth over to the Moon and we'll immediately be reduced in terms of weight by down to a factor of one-sixth of our weight on Earth, because that's roughly the factor uh, by which the gravitational acceleration on the Moon is smaller than the gravitational acceleration on the Earth. Now, that's a really effective way to drop those kilos. On the other hand, our mass hasn't actually changed. So mass is that fundamental quantity that describes how much material really is present. Weight depends on the situation. Now, you may quite rightly contend that basically only 12 people have been on the moon. Um, and so it's pretty safe assumption that we're actually talking about being on the Earth. So we'll get rid of the moon. And we know the Earth's gravitational acceleration. So it's fair enough to say that the weight, we can just know that g is 9.8 and scale everything back. And that's exactly what the spring scale does. But it's not just a question of am I on the Earth or am I on the Moon. So let's explore this a bit further. Suppose we put everything into an elevator and then we let that elevator accelerate upward. Question is, what changes? Well, actually, a whole lot of things change. All of our equations that we've written down there and just copied over are actually wrong. So why is that? Well, remember, Newton's second law says that the sum of the forces acting on an object are equal to its mass times its acceleration. The mass sitting on the scale stuck in the elevator with the elevator accelerating upward with acceleration A is also accelerating upward. Not just the elevator, but the mass as well has an acceleration of A, and so does the scale and everything else in the elevator if there's people making this measurement. So we have to amend our second law. Some of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration. Now we again remember our choice of convention. Up will be positive and down will be negative. So FSM minus FEM is equal to MA. When we rearrange this time we have to keep that MA term around. FEM is still MG, so we can go ahead and put that in. And then when we apply Newton's third law and simplify things a little bit, we get force by the mass on the scale is now a negative M times the quantity G plus A. We've changed the effective gravitational acceleration from G to G plus A. Okay, so 
What this ultimately means is, of course, that those forces have had to get bigger in order to allow us to move with an acceleration upward, and therefore the scale now reads a correspondingly larger force, and that has changed our weight. So the difference between mass and weight, mass is the fundamental thing. It doesn't change, it tells you how much stuff is there, but weight, measured as the size of that force exerted by the mass on the scale, depends on not only the mass of the object, which is sort of what we're claiming it's talking about, but also the gravitational acceleration and any other accelerations present. Okay, So weight is a very situation-dependent quantity. It's not at all a fundamental property, whereas mass truly is. So this video has hopefully convinced you that mass is that fundamental thing. It's the true measure of what's present in an object, whereas weight depends on all of these different things. Hopefully this video has convinced you of that and has been helpful in explaining why that is the case, and to truly test whether or not it was successful in that goal, we can just turn to this food for thought, a couple of questions to think about. What happens if the elevator accelerates down at 9.8 meters per second squared? And what happens in space if you're so far away, off in deep space, that there is no gravitational acceleration, no gravitational force acting on you, but your rocket fires its thrusters and accelerates you at 9.8 meters per second squared? So have a think. Hope you enjoyed this video.